Hey everyone, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. I'm reporting live from the Ford pick -em up truck from the Lowe's Hardware parking lot. As you know, I'm on a field trip. At this point, if you follow me, you know I go on field trips when everyone's asleep at the camper. It's very early on a Sunday morning, and so I went out, I got my little mocha. Good to see last drop. And I got my notes over here on the computer. Now we almost just had a meltdown because my computer needed to do a hard reboot. And luckily, Lowe's has free Wi-Fi. Thank you, Lowe's. There's a free plug for you. And I was able to pull my notes back up because y'all, I took some pl uh, plenty of notes on I uh, Dr. Richard Frierson. Is that how you say it? And correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. You already know from the uh, from the picture or whatever if you're following this case. The star witness as far as I'm concerned you know case closed done let's go home let's go out to dinner go back home um so let's just jump into it again you know as you know I uh, I'm gonna be looking down here at my computer for little notes that I did and so let's start talking so right in the beginning when the defense is gonna question him and uh, it's like he's trying to make this point that he's paid for and all that but it's so cringy because it's almost like the defense is embarrassed to go down that road because he just doesn't have that same delivery that the prosecution has. I mean, I don't know how to say it. Like, he just doesn't have that same process. It's almost like he's too much of a happy-go-lucky, jolly-type dude to come across as cross. You know what I'm saying? But basically, this this uh, a psychiatrist is saying it's part of my salary. Like this is basically part of my job. You know, <laughs> like they built that into my salary. I'm not charging hourly. This is part of my job, and so I'm doing it. And which goes, you know, reading the comments and stuff like that. I mean, that goes far. I mean, you saw I did the thing on paid for testimony. You know, and here's my thing about stop. Sorry, I'm like so into this coffee right now. So, paid for testimony, I have a hard time believing because of the obvious reasons. We've talked about that. There's a video on it. I'll probably put a card up there for it. Um, now, this guy's uh, stuff, I mean, I'm all da I'm down for that, so I'll just preface this with that. Totally down for what he said. I think it all makes sense. Uh, sold, all that. On the same note, I don't want to seem like, you know, hypocritical about things because, like, let's, again, I always go back to this trial for an example, but let's look at the staircase. Dwayne Deaver, state's witness, part of his job to testify, gets up there, lies about his credentials, lies about the evidence, and seemingly, so, I mean, I believed him at first, you know what I mean? Like, he seemed completely sold. So while I totally believe the psychiatrist, I just think this is a good example of, to, again, a little side note to stand back and be like, this does happen. Uh, it doesn't matter what I'm getting at, whether it's a state's witness, an expert witness, and getting testimony, both things can be dicey if they want to be. That being said, so it's just another example of, well, let's keep in mind that this happens. Anyways, so... But we're going to go based on that we believe every word this man says. I didn't find anything to be... I mean, to me, he just connected all the dots. And he had such a... I mean, he just seemed like... You know in the cooking shows, like uh, Ida, I can't think of her last name and stuff like that, where they cook for these... Like, they have these fabulous gay friends that they cook for and stuff. He seemed like one of those friends. You know what I'm saying? That I'm like, I bet you know, like, women that cook you fancy food on their cooking shows up in the Hamptons. You know what I'm saying? There was just something. He just seemed like this cool dude. And, I mean, his credentials kept going and going and going and going and going. They did not stop. I mean, you're just like, wow, this dude is really accomplished. This guy is really smart in this field. I mean, he knows this stuff. I mean, when he's talking about you have to take the boards every 10 years, he's like, I wrote the boards. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he, but not in like an arrogant way, but he was just so matter of fact. So... All that being said, right off the rip, you know, the defense is like, well, what was your conclusion? And he says, where to go? Um, Jones knew the difference between legally and morally wrong in regards to his actions. Done. And now I do want to say that he said he interviewed, interviewed Jones on like six occasions, I think, for a total of 19 hours, reviewed hundreds of thousands of documents, talked to family members. I mean, when he talks about what he did to come to this conclusion, you're like, oh, this is thoroughly researched. This guy has spent a lot of time on this. A lot of time. And he probably knew. I mean, he said this is the most, like, I don't know if he said the most complicated case, but maybe he did. 
anyways, so I'm going to go into a few little things in the beginning and we'll get deeper into these. But I mean, essentially he's like, yeah, he didn't have any fear of Natan until he blew the outlet. No fear earlier that day. Uh, and he goes into some details about how after he killed Natan, he looked up the video of American History X and was fearful that inmates would want to kill him because of what he did. So um, this is one thing that I feel like the doctor does. And again, I'm going to get into a couple of those little things. I'm just going down in order how I wrote these notes. Um... I feel like the doctor inserts conversations that he had with this guy and it paints a picture because we can sit here and read, okay, with well, evidence says that point A, he did this point B, but then it's like the doctor is providing more context and the context that he's providing is not good for Tim Jones Jr. I mean, it's glaringly obvious that he knows exactly what he was doing in that moment. So, now he also says that Tim Jones Jr. was basically like, I thought it was better for me to take their lives. And they kind of go back and forth the prosecution later with like, how is it better for him? Because you're going to interpret that in a way of like, oh, it's easier for me to live my life without the kids. And, but the doctor is kind of like, well, no, this is what I mean. And basically... Tim felt morally justified in killing the children because he wanted them to be all together. And he basically was like, okay, I've accidentally killed Natan. And so I'm going to be in prison the rest of my life. Amber doesn't want these kids. So he says, um, they're going to be in a situation like I was, which I guess is like, he felt unwanted, abandoned. Um, you know, they're going to have this horrible life. So it's better for me to kill them. And, and that's exactly what I think he said, too. That's what he meant. Um, now, there could have been a level of, like, oh, well, let me try and go on the run. But I think that he was so convinced he was going to get caught and this and that. And I believe that. I mean, I think that he knew. I mean, Tim is not a dumb person. And we'll get into his IQ in a little bit. So, but I think that's exactly what he did. He was playing God. And you heard where he was, like, diagnosed at some point with, like, narcissistic personality. I mean, I'm, like, absolutely 100%. Um, so yeah, I mean, he just, he morally justified it. I mean, in his world, he was playing God. He was like, you know what? I'm doing these kids a favor. They're going to have a crappy life. So I'll just take them out. And we've heard this before with people where, I mean, that's kind of like their, their thought process. And I don't think it's a thought process and, you know, coming from La La Land, I think it's a thought process and just this guy is that narcissistic. He's that vile, that, you know, evil. Um, anyways, let's keep going. So this doctor doesn't seem to have, you know, uh, diagnosed him with the schizophrenic stuff. Uh, these are the diagnoses that I've wrote down. Now, if he did mention the schizophrenic thing or whatever, or he diagnosed him, please drop it in the comments because I felt like I didn't hear that. Uh, but he was up there a long time, so, um, pardon me. Okay, diagnosis, substance-induced psychotic disorder, cannabis use disorder, alcohol use disorder. So, I mean, all of these things which are basically self-induced, you know, I mean, there's not, a, you know, substance-induced psychotic disorder, you know. I mean, because essentially, and we'll get to this for a little bit, well, and let me go ahead and say this. So, the prosecution says, if it wasn't for the spice, and again, the spice is like the synthetic marijuana that he's doing, if it wasn't for the spice, we wouldn't be here. And the doctor hesitates, and he says, I don't think so. And so, you could tell he questioned it. Like, there's a level of, like, you know, uh, but there's a large part of, like, you know, that's, you know, blame it on the spice. Um, now, I don't think he's saying, nope, they would be a happy-go-lucky fi family if it wasn't for the spice, but I think he literally was, like, it was a huge contributing factor, you know, into the, also into this, whatever he went into. Um, now, another thing that I thought was interesting... Okay, wait, hold on. The voices. Okay, now, y'all... And I am absolutely not trying to sound like, oh, I called it out. But this is just something that I recognize so quickly because I'm an extremely anxious person and my mind never stops. And so the second he was like talking about these voices and they told him to do, granted his thing, the voices were, they were telling him to do these horrible things. But I was like, those aren't voices like, and again, I don't, I'm not a shrink, but I'm like, those aren't voices that are like, you know, a, a psychiatrist, you know, that's, you know, just inner thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Those are just inner thoughts of how do I get away with this? I mean, that's exactly what it was. 
And the doctor said the same thing. Doctor says the voices he claims to hear are not psychotic hallucinations, but rather his own anxious thoughts. And Tim wanted to get rid of those. Absolutely. You just wipe your family out. Yeah, you're going to be anxious. You know, you're going to be going down to a list of stuff. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Um, the digression into I accidentally killed Natan. Let me wipe out the rest of the family to do him a favor. Obviously, that's not normal, but that's literally his reasoning skills. Like, that's what... I mean, he just was like, yeah, that's the best thing for them. You know, I don't think in a crazy way. Um, okay, so then let's talk about this real quick. So, he says that Tim tried to kill himself by hanging when he was incarcerated. And they had him watch a video of it or whatever. And he says it literally went on for an hour. And he, it was basically like he, would, he had a sheet tied around his neck. And I could never tell... If he was trying to jump off the bed or just lift his feet and let it choke him, I don't know. But he says that he would like readjust it, take it off his neck, do this, do that, da 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 da. And essentially, he was like, I also, of course, this doctor does everything. He was like, I also like do some kind of study of inmates that kill themselves. And he was like, most of them just do it. Like, there's not, this is very abnormal. This doesn't happen. You know, and essentially, at some point, correct me if I'm wrong. He mentions that uh, Tim was basically like, well, I was just mad because he didn't give me my pills. So he's kind of acting out. Like, essentially, to me, it was like, he used the word being ambivalent, but I think also we could use the word dramatic. Um, you know, he probably knew how to work the system at that point. I mean, I don't know. Uh, because I'm like, what are you hoping to get out of a, a t attempted suicide attempt? But again, it's just one of those cowardly things, I think, where it's just like, really? You're sitting there for an hour with a sheet around your neck? I mean, come on. Um... So, then they go into the brain structures. And while the doctor is basically like, yeah, it's very impressive. I mean, you can physically see the thing on his head. I mean, he's just like, you know what? I had all these different tests done and stuff. He's like, just because someone has a, a this injury or trauma or this or that or whatever does not mean that they have this damage. They can be a perfectly normal person. And a perfectly normal person can have those things. It doesn't you know, equate to, oh, this happened, so it's automatic. Which, again, he's just blowing the defense down brick by brick. And, but not in a way of, like, I intentionally, personally want to see this guy go down. It, you just kind of feel like I'm just simply preventing, presenting the facts, and here's they are, here's the answers to your questions. And all these answers and facts lead up to this guy is completely sane and guilty. Um... Okay, let's see here. Okay, so then the IQ thing was very interesting. And he says, you know, when I came in, you know, I looked at uh, Tim's IQ and it was like super low. But he graduated top of his class and a very di engineering is very difficult. I mean, that is like, I mean, if any of y'all are in that, you know, it's like super difficult. And so he said he basically had him retested and that Tim scored off the charts. And why? Because Tim was so doped up the first time on the meds at the psych uh, psychiatrist or whatever at the um, uh, prison had him on or jail, whatever, that, you know, he was just completely catatonic and so he did bad. But once he was off that, he did, you know, scored off the charts. So, very interesting. Um, you know, again, because this just... Tim is very, very smart. I mean, he might be bizarre and weird and evil and all these things. He is extremely smart. And that's where it also seems to be like, why did this guy who's like top of his class, I mean, to graduate the way he did with a family and a job and all that, I mean, that's insane in that program. I mean, that's like, I mean, not insane, obviously, but, you know, that's like, wow, that really speaks volumes. So I'm like, what? how do you even do that? And I think, honestly, it's the drugs and anger. So let's let's continue. Okay, so he says that they basically they were documenting like when he was arrested, it was almost like they're like, oh he's foaming at the mouth and all this like crazy stuff or whatever. And then within twenty four hours he went back to normal. And so essentially the doctor is like, look, if this is a true psychotic mental breakdown that he had during these kill the killings and that's what he was like. He, you know, when they picked him up, whatever, when he, they called him, however it went. He was like, you don't go back to normal from that without treatment. Like, that's not something like you wake up and say, oh, well, I feel better now. So he was like, that was like, I think he raised getting into the substance-induced psychotic, you know, 
type thing. Like, basically, he was like that. He was coming off of drugs, you know, is what it was. Uh, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't in, uh, you know, some manic, you know, type thing. He was coming off drugs. Um, okay, so then, and I don't have what the statue does, but he reads, uh, I should have looked that up, and I... Anyways, look it up if you want to. Um, he reads the criminally responsible statute for South Carolina. And so criminally responsible is like basically describing what it means to be responsible or not responsible because of insanity and breaks it down. And when you hear him read that, you 100% are like, oh, yeah. If the judge is presenting this to him like, here are your options, jury. These are the options you have and this is what it means. Take personal feelings out of it. If they go read that, he is not guilty. I mean, it's just by definition. It's that he's not guilty by insanity. Then there's this level, and, and I don't even, I don't understand this, and I don't know if this is going to be an option, um, but it was like, they're guilty. Okay, so like, there's the not guilty by insanity. So, you know what I mean? It's like, you're not guilty because you're insane. I don't know what happens to you at that point, but then there's the you're guilty but you are, it's almost like you're guilty. You're going to like go to a hospital or something like that, you know, cause like you almost couldn't resist the urge. Like you knew what you were doing was wrong, but there was something that like forced you to do it, you know, not like another person, but some irresistible urge or something. So it's still like, you know, mm, you ain't right, but you know, you're not just a hundred percent evil, like just a, a, a killer or whatever. Um, and so I found that interesting, but listening to it, I mean, right off the bat, I was like, oh yeah, this guy's done. You know, he's just, you know, this guy's done. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, and so then here, I spoke on this a minute ago, but I'll do it again real quick. He makes a correlation of all the things Tim had, such as childhood trauma, head injury, drug abuse. And he says that none of that automatically equates to mental illness later in life. You know, so he writes that off, you know, just like, no. Um, he says that he doesn't find Tim's religious beliefs to be considered hyper-religious or to align themselves with someone who is mentally ill. Um, now, to me, this is why I explain, this is why the defense keeps bringing that up because I think that they're trying to show, well, look, he talks in tongues and he, you know, is this, that, and the other. And the, the psychiatrist is basically like, well, no, he's obviously very... Um, uh, a, a conservative, very, you know, by the book, I can't remember the name right now. Um, he's all these things, but it's not in the context of, and he gave some example where it's like when people who say they go off their meds and they start to kind of get lost. And, you know, I think a lot of times I see this like with, you know, uh, a lot of times I see it with people, street preachers, and maybe homeless people that are preaching out, you know, they're just kind of lost and they start to think that I am God or, you know, these kind of very out there like, okay, we're not rooted in reality anymore with religion, that type stuff. And he gave some example of some other inmate who thought he was Allah and was getting in confrontations with people who didn't believe him. And so it's like, that's affecting your reality. And Tim's not doing that. Tim's just, you know, a conservative, you know, control freak in my opinion um okay so then towards the end of this um the let's see the prosecution goes to a timeline of what happened that day he has the doctor goes to the timeline and listening to it you're just like yeah i mean he went to work you know he came home he smoked scooby snacks uh he was very frustrated with something going on you know he picked the kids up you know, tried the electrical socket, it didn't work. I mean, uh, you hear, like, this, like, if you listen to any part of the testimony, that part is so interesting because it walks you through literally what happened and it's very creepy and you just see what took place. And one thing I think is interesting, I'm curious what y'all think because basically in all of this, Tim keeps saying that Natan was an accident, Natan was an accident. And somehow I have missed in this testimony, I have not watched it live, so there's been a blip of it that I've missed. I have missed the aspect of the autopsy report, what the autopsy report said. Um, because that's just, I don't know what's going on. I don't I don't know if that's true or not. But I think it's interesting that he stands by that, Natan was an accident, Natan was an accident. Um but he, the doctor goes through Tim's account of that day and you just see what happened. And yeah, I mean, he ended up, I mean, I'm like, he was stressed out, you know, and he went into a rage and I think that he accidentally killed Natan, you know, and then his reasoning from there was just bizarre and full of, you know, whatever, um, a series of bad choices, but not insanity by any means. Um, and so then another interesting thing is that the, 
basically the prosecution had the doctor, or the doctor went through a list of things, and he was basically like, this shows legal accountability, this shows moral accountability. Like, basically, because he did this, he is legally responsible. Because he did this, he is morally responsible. And it could be things like, you know, the uh, he looked at the rape scene and was worried about what prisoners would say to him, you know, or do to him. So that's, like, evidence of morally wrong. He's concerned about what others are going to do or think or whatever. Um, also, the fact of, excuse me, you know, trying to hide this from that or, you know, all the decisions. And, I mean, when he goes down and breaks down his interpretation, you're like, yeah. I mean, it's everything you probably are already thinking where it's like, well, this shows that he legally knew it was wrong. This shows he was morally wrong. It's very fascinating. It's towards the end of, like, day three that he does this or day, I don't know, it's 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 towards the end of it. Um, and it's very interesting and very telling. And so those are all the notes that I made on it. Um, you know, overall, again, I just feel like this doctor was amazing. I feel like he was the breath of fresh air that we needed up there with some of this testimony, um, coming from doctors and stuff like that, because to me, this guy just seemed like unaffected. You know what I mean? Like I'm up here, this is part of my job, I'm doing it. And here's what I found out. And, you know, and he did say, he was like, I tend to believe Tim because he was like, most of what he was saying was not a good look for him. You know, he was like, it was very damning for his defense. And so I don't think that he was lying about these things. Yeah, I think that that was the truth. Um, and I tend to agree. Yeah, because like the things that the doctor's talking about, I'm just like, this doesn't look good. Yeah, because some of the stuff, you can hear the narcissistic come out. That's like, even in a moment of, you know, whatever, not even narcissistic, but well, that mixed in with guilt knowing of wrongdoing, you know, and like that conscious thing or whatever, like, oh my God, like, I mean, he knew what he did was wrong. And so there's this level of, you know, of course he's going to feel bad on some level. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, you know, whether it's for himself or whatever. Um, but you can kind of see that come out with some of the stuff that the doctor's saying that Tim told him. And it, it's almost like, well, yeah, I mean, he just can't keep his mouth shut. He's not, he can't keep it together enough to try and play this defense. I think what happened is he got in jail and started realizing, A, this is where I'm at for the rest of my life. B, I mean, he knows the drill. He's been to prison before. He knows what's going to happen to him. Or he knows he's going to have to be segregated with, you know, the child molesters, people like that. And so... He probably got a hold of a jailhouse lost lawyer and, you know, started reading the case law, whatever, and kind of trying to cook up this defense. You know, again, Tim is not a dumb person. Uh, I mean, he has a very high IQ. He might not be street smart, you know, but he's very intelligent. And so he probably has been cooking this defense up, but... You know, and I'll end up, I'll, I'm going to end this on this because I was talking to some people in the Discord channel about this. I was like this. I was like, I can't tell if the defense um, is low-key trying to get him the death penalty. You know, I was like, because sometimes I was like, this, I was like, this questioning, the defense questioned this doctor for so long and I would have left it alone at a certain point because the, if you, you already knew it was going to be bad and what they're trying to do so much to try and get the doctor to say this or that or the other, it's just not going their way. They get these people up there and they try and question them in a certain way that just, it makes Tim look even worse, you know? And so that's where I'm like, just leave it alone, you know? Walk away while you can. So anyways, y'all, Monday is going to be the day that they put up, the, the, the uh, closing arguments happen, can't wait. Very curious to see how long the jury stays out. Um, so, anyways, uh, I hope y'all are doing well. And welcome all the new followers. I'm We've gotten a bunch of new followers to the channel. So we'll do a little video for y'all to, to let you know all the ways you can hang out and talk with the community here. Everyone here is awesome. I love everybody to death. Uh, I hope y'all have a great week and weekend. We'll be talking about this soon. And I will see you soon. Bye.